Hey guys, as the title of this video suggests, this is my, well, disaster of the uh, mare body. Uh, I obviously proceed to cut it, but we have a disaster in the end. Uh, I'll take you through the step-by-steps on the plywood and then the disaster at the end. And I'll tell you what the disaster at the end was. Uh, after two years of using this with the new control i had to build the new control two years ago because the original chinese all-in-one controller eventually gave up so i built it out of separates and it kept losing steps so every time you did a revolution its center moved further and further away as you'll see at the end of the video and i've had to reduce the acceleration and i reduced the speed and that brought everything back to centre. But like I say, I was using it for two years and it was fine. All of a sudden it started stepping, a, stepping off. So I changed the acceleration for each of the motors plus also the speed. And that's in Mac 3. So without further ado, here's the cock up in question. Okay, so for this project, Mare uh, Guitar Build Off, I took the shape of the guitar, as you can see there, and I just copied the outline. Uh, I didn't use any of the CNC files because they're not available to me. I just wanted the outside of the body. That's the only thing you wanted. All contours, I'll sort of like change a little bit. But the body shape's the same as per the rules of the competition as laid down by Austin. There he is. And for the Project Mare 2022 guitar build off. So I've taken the body shape, and I'll just get rid of that. And you can see the outer body. Now I have decided to do like a thin line or a hollow body, semi hollow, whatever you want to call it. I am not a luthier by any shade of the imagination. <laughs> I mess about with wood as a hobby. So what I was going to do was the outer and the cavity. And if I preview the, that would create the cavity for the internals of the body. Then I glue on another face layer and a back layer at the back so they would this would be obviously a hollow cavity so that's where we're going to start it now i'm going to use plywood because i have uh, a few sheets of cabinet grade ply off cuts and it'll be for me it's good fun to build that ply just then if it works right if it's all happy then i can build it out of proper wood so this is the uh, toolpath I've just generated. If I go back to 2D, you can see I've put all sorts of lines in here trying to look for contours and things like that. And there's the back. I'm using uh, VCarve Pro, so it's not 3D, it's only 2.5D, so I have to get creative when it comes to creating edges if I'm going to use the machine. I'm going to use hand tools, not a big deal, but uh, i get the machine to rough out as much as I can. Uh, fixed bridge six string and there's the headstock shape so without further ado i'll move on to the garage and we'll start with the uh, center section of the ply this being four sheets of 15 mil ply glued together so it'll be slightly thicker than the average body but it'll allow for a nice bit of contouring okay so i've glued up the center section uh to layers of 15 mil ply i've run that side through the saw just to give me a flat edge that's my reference surface everything will be referenced from the center and i've copied all the lines over uh, with a pencil so this will be the cavity plus an outline and then that will have a sheet glued on it there'll be a sheet glued on there and like i say i've got quite a lot of these off cuts of cabinet grade ply so i thought it'd be fun and to be honest i want it to be fun I don't want to be under pressure and yes it can always be built out of real wood but i want to get the uh the idea down pat and like i've said i'm not a luthier i don't build guitars i'd like to build a few guitars but this is a great way to start i think 
And yes, my garage is messy. It's always messy. Okay, so what I've done is I've zeroed the board. I've screwed it to my spoil board. And yes, the spoil board has seen better days and probably wants renewing. Uh, the centre line, I'm referencing everything from centre. So I've used this uh, one millimetre cutter. Uh, then zeroed everything. Then installed this 12. And just so happens that the 12 mil I've got here is the only bit I've got. It's the smallest bit I've got that will go through 30 mil of ply. So which is a bit weird so i'll have to invest in a smaller cutter uh all my 3175s my eighth of an inch ones are just not long enough to go through all the way through 30 mil apply so without further ado i'll turn this on and we'll get the uh, cavity cut out first Okay, we've set up this machine uh, and get the dust extractor on, so I'll obviously cut out the audio. Okay, so the centre section's out the uh, machine. Uh, you can see there, that's the hollow chamber and obviously the outline of the guitar body. So what I've got to do now is put a top and a bottom on and then profile everything. But before I do that, I need to work out where all my controls are going because I didn't do that beforehand because I didn't even think about it. Now it's going to get two P90s. and a hardtail bridge. Uh, I'll probably recess the bridge slightly because I want the neck to be to be flat. I don't want to put an angle on it. So I want it all flat. So I will prepare the next piece of wood and then we'll move on to hollowing out the interior because the, obviously 15 mil is a bit thick. I want to hollow it down to about five. Okay, so this is the uh, the front. And I've uh, hollowed it out, reduced weight, and like I said, making a semi-hollow body type of affair. And then I cut these down. Uh, that's 11 mil from this surface, so that leaves me 5 mil, 4 mil there, and 4 mil in there. That for the switch, and obviously this for the uh, volume and tone pots, which I'd forgotten about. I had not made any allowance for those. So after I'd cut this, I was going to cut this right down to uh, the form, so it's only four mil thick just here. Uh, and then I thought, well, if I curve the top, I need allowance. So I stopped it at eight mil and just took the control cavities there down to the 11 mil. Now, if I bring the front up again, there's the front. Let's turn it round. There's the front. And there's the matching section so when those are glued together then I can contour this cut out the neck pocket and either radius I'm going to radius the back but I'll put a sloping edge on there and then obviously cut the the outer again okay now I've clamped it up with just about every one of my reasonably sized clamps uh, these are very good. Uh, click clamp. Makes life easier, although I do like my G clamps, although I've only got three of them. Uh, so that's now going to uh, cook off there, as they say. Uh, I've wiped most of the glue out of the cavities. It's a bit down there that I'm not going to get worried about. So we'll come back as soon as this done and we will profile the top. Okay, so uh, while we were waiting for the glue to cook off on that, I uh, just uh, put this piece of 15 mil in the CNC and cut, this is the back panel, obviously. And obviously these are access points to get to the electrics or the potentiometers and obviously the switch. 
uh hopefully they're big enough i've got the switch switch just arrived from amazon so i'll be trying to force it through that hole if it fits excellent if it doesn't well we're back to drawing board but no big problem uh shouldn't be a big problem anyway i've left tabs on here turn it over we can see there's tabs and obviously i tried to cut it as close as i could without going too far through and wrecking my spoil board more so <clears throat> once the other piece is glued and we've profiled the top we'll glue this on and we can get it profiled and then we'll deal with the neck pocket last the problem i've got with the neck pocket is the fact that i don't know how much wider i need to make the pocket or based on the neck because i haven't cut the neck yet so it may be that i've cut the neck all right i'll move on okay well i've uh glued the top part onto the center cavity which you've seen in the uh, in the clamps in the garage so now i've got to this stage where i've used the sweep two rail sweep function i think it's called uh obviously i'm using decal pro and i've created basically a chamfer in the body you can see there uh, so this is the top chamfer. Again, everything referenced from the center point. And hopefully this will turn out okay. So what I'll do now is we'll move into the garage and we'll show you the machine running. Got, but we're actually to do this. Well, that's the roofing pass complete. I've just turned off the extractor. It's a little furry, it's a straight bit in ply. But it's only a, a roughing pass, and to be honest, there's gonna be a lot of sanding to be done, which I'll carry out after so we can see it's getting this nice step down we'll finish off with where is it uh, this this is a 3.175 it's an eighth of an inch uh, up cut million bit packet of 10 for about 12 15 quid off Amazon they're quite good okay so I'll move on to the uh, final pass on that well there's been a complete disaster a complete cock up machines cutting over here and it ended up the center being somewhere there so it's lost steps and I've managed to cut myself note to sell don't rub your hand down plywood when it's rough so that's uh, three pieces of ply and two days work let's just bug it up Anyway, so there's no point in dwelling on it. Might as well learn and move on. So, what are we going to do? We'll try this again. However, we'll do three. We'll do the four separate sheets. So instead of cut, gluing two together and then cutting the shape, we'll cut the shapes individually and then stack glue them afterwards and then shape them. Hopefully, that'll give us a better a better idea. <laughs> 